Hello, welcome to another video. In today's lesson, we'll be talking about the HVAC systems. What are the different types of the HVAC systems? But without getting into the details of every single type, which we're going to be leaving for a sequence of videos. So at this point in time, make sure that you subscribe to the channel to stay tuned with all of these releases that are going to be supplementing this video because the subject is quite vast and it needs an extensive detail. It's not just simply about explaining uh, a list. Now, HVAC system A, B, C, and D, and that's mainly it. Not really. Every single system is a world by itself. And what we're going to be doing in the upcoming videos, we'll be walking you through these different systems with a, with a, with a couple of a key points and explanation, just to help you grab the idea of the different systems that you have within the HVAC industry, their areas of application and their limitations. But before we get to that specific detailed level, we should set the foundation. And the foundation that I'm talking about is the criteria for classifying the HVAC systems. Now, regardless of the system, it should fit within these two different types. Every single HVAC system out there falls within these two criteria. Number one, whether it's a centralized HVAC system, or two, it's a decentralized HVAC system. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the HVAC system types based on these two different categories, the main types of HVAC systems, whether they are centralized or decentralized HVAC systems. So let's start with the centralized HVAC system. When we say an HVAC system is a centralized HVAC system, regardless of the various options that you have, it means that the component which is going to be releasing the hot air to the environment is located somewhere outdoors. It's important to keep in mind the four components for the refrigeration cycle. In case you have no idea what is the refrigeration cycle, I would strongly suggest that you take a look at the video that we have on the um, foundation, which is the refrigeration cycle, what it is, how it works, what are the big components. But we, for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that you already know these components, which are the compressor, the evaporator, the condenser, and the expansion valve. These set the foundation for an HVAC system. Any HVAC system, regardless of the type, will always obey these four different elements that make up the refrigeration cycle. So let's just go back to the uh, concept of a centralized HVAC system. We're taking a look at these different components. When we say a centralized HVAC system, it means we are going to be collecting the heat from our space, the occupied zone, we're going to be absorbing the heat and going to be dumping it somewhere outside, outdoors. And in order to do so, this will be done through the condenser, which is the component that's going to be releasing the heat into the environment. That part is going to be located somewhere away from the evaporator, the part responsible for absorbing the heat. And this is the case for a chilled water system, for example, as we're going to be seeing in the upcoming videos when we talk about every single a specific system type by itself. So at this moment, just subscribe to the channel just to stay tuned with all of these releases. So a centralized HVAC system, we are dealing with a central component, which is the condenser. Let's take the chilled water system as an example. It's going to be located somewhere outdoors, and we're going to be collecting the heat from all the different zones to be delivered to that condenser or the plant or the central plant that will be releasing that air into the environment, that will be dumping the heat into the environment. So that would be a central HVAC system where you have the condenser, the part responsible for releasing the heat located somewhere away from the zone, away from the evaporator with the means of a connection between them, piping and network that takes the heat from part A, which is the zone, all the, way to, all the way to part B, which is the location of the condenser that's located somewhere outdoors, that's going to be dumping it into the environment. So this is mainly it when we're talking about the centralized HVAC system, because many professionals out there get confused with the concept. What is, an, what is a centralized HVAC system? What is a decentralized HVAC system? So when you hear the word centralized, the first thing that should pop to mind is that the condenser has to be somewhere quite far away from the 
evaporator. And mainly it follows the, it goes with large applications. We're talking about buildings and districts where we are collecting heat from variable locations, variable apartments, variable housings, variable buildings. In the case of district cooling, as we're going to be seeing in the upcoming videos, we will be collecting that heat taking it to a central plant and that plant is responsible for releasing that heat collected from all of these areas into the environment. So this is mainly it when we're talking about the first type, the first criteria, which is the centralized HVAC system. The second type it would be the decentralized HVAC system, which is actually the complete opposite. Now a decentralized HVAC system Unlike the centralized, now the centralized, mainly we have the refrigerant, the medium responsible for the heat absorption is going to be water. But in the case of the decentralized HVAC system, normally we call them DX systems, we have a refrigerant, which is a liquid responsible for absorbing the heat from the environment. As we're going to be seeing in all of these upcoming videos and releases, we're going to be addressing every single type that we are aware of for the HVAC systems. We're going to be take, taking a look at the uh, split systems, the unit systems, the package units, the district cooling, chilled water systems, the package units and the window package units mainly. All of these um, types, all of these um, options for HVAC systems, we are going to be taking a look at them one by one in the upcoming sequence of videos. So feel free to subscribe if that's of interest to you, obviously. Now, let's get back to the subject, which is the uh, decentralized HVAC system. Now, a decentralized HVAC system, as you recall, the four components for the refrigeration cycle, the compressor, the evaporator, the expansion valve, and the, uh, the yes, all of them got mentioned, all of them are going to be located at a specific location. So let's say you're taking the heat from a house. You have a split unit installed. So that part, the evaporator, which is in, inside the apartment, is going to be absorbing the heat from the apartment. And the condenser will be placed somewhere on the back end of the wall to release the heat into the environment. So the location that you have for all of these components, they are taking place right next to each other. This is what, this is what we mean by a decentralized. Every single area has a specific system responsible for its cooling where all of these components they are located back to back. On the other hand, a centralized HVAC system, you have the condensers located quite maybe miles away from the evaporators which are located at multiple locations where the heat is collected and passed on to that central plant. So a decentralized HVAC system, we can think about it as a unitary HVAC system. We have all of these four components, four key components present in that system dealing with that specific location. And that's the reason why a decentralized HVAC system is suitable for, uh, let's say, small applications in terms of load requirements. So if you have a building that you would like to cool, we're talking about a three-story building, 10-story building, 25 towers, most probably you'll be heading towards the centralized HVAC system, whether we're talking about a chilled water system or district cooling, depending on the key area of application. Simply for the reason, it's able to handle higher load requirements because the water flowing in the system has a higher specific heat capacity. Again, the concept of specific heat, if you're not familiar with it, take a look at our videos. We do have a video released specifically for specific heat. Simply put, it's the ability of a, um, a fluid to absorb heat before the temperature goes up. So for water compared to refrigerant, it has a higher specific heat capacity. It means it can absorb a lot of energy, a lot of heat before we see a significant increase in the temperature. So that's why we use water for these applications. So a centralized HVAC system is capable of handling higher loads, while a decentralized HVAC system will handle smaller loads. Let's say a house, a villa, an apartment, where you have a couple tons of cooling requirements, an office floor. So the application dominates in the sense. 
if we have a higher load requirement, we'll be deviating towards a centralized HVAC system. If we have a moderate load requirement, we'll be heading for a decentralized HVAC system. Also, the decentralized is quite easy to install, uh, simpler in terms of installation, because you have less components that you're dealing with. But with the centralized HVAC systems, we're going to be seeing in the upcoming videos, you do have multiple components, and it requires a proper geographic location. So at this point, we're familiar with the two main categories for HVAC systems, which are the centralized and the decentralized HVAC systems, where we have given a couple examples on both criteria for you to have an, a complete perspective. Now, in the upcoming videos, we will be talking about these different systems with a bit more detail. Their areas of applications, their limitations, and for you to have an idea how do they look like. So if that sounds interesting to you, by all means, feel free to subscribe and join our community and stay tuned with all of these updates. In the course description below as well, I've kept for you a link to our premium HVAC masterclass, which includes five courses that dive into the details of the HVAC design process. So if you want to take that knowledge that you have to a whole new level for something that you can actually apply, where you have that theoretical end connected to that practical real life expertise. Now, definitely this masterclass is for you. Take a look at the reviews and the, the students that have taken that class, they have actually loved it. Now, most probably quite skeptical, that's one of these other courses as well. Well, feel free to try it out because all of our classes, they come with a 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like the class, let's simply take it for a test run. Let us know what you think. If you don't like it, by all means, let us know. You send us a message and we'll simply refund you for that enrollment that you have paid up front, let's say. But it's, it's, it's a delight to have the a community learn from all of these things. And we've seen the feedback. It's quite phenomenal. They enjoyed it. They liked the, the knowledge that we've been sharing. Most probably it's not perfect, but it surely transformed the uh, level of knowledge that many people have in the HVAC field. So feel free to take a look at it. I kept the uh, link for the premium masterclass on our academy below. Have a look at it. If, if you think that you fit within that criteria of as an HVAC professional and you want to take your knowledge to a whole new level, then I would strongly recommend that you give it a try. So and see for yourself whether you are benefiting from that a pool of knowledge we are sharing within these five courses all of them under one premium masterclass where we'll be talking about how to conduct load calculations which is an area even professionals in the field they fail at most probably will tell you use a software get it done but do you have an idea how it works in the background most probably don't and we're going to explain that to you we're going to take a look at the chilled water systems how to calculate the flow rate or chilled water system which is a tricky area as well how to conduct duct design for whatever project that you have, whether the manual way or the software-based way. We're going to teach you how to do a proper distribution design for the HVAC system based on proper practices. So you're going to be learning about load calculations, the various types of fundamentals, engineering fundamentals that every single mechanical engineer, HVAC engineer should know. We're going to, you're going to be learning about the duct sizing. How can you do it the manual way and the software-based way? How do you do the air distribution design? Learn about the chilled water systems and how to calculate the flow rate for chilled water systems. All of these are key headlines with a lot more in the, uh, the this premium masterclass. And I, I also be getting the access to the community members who have taken the course. This is a great perk that the students are enjoying in this class where simply they enroll in this premium masterclass and they get access to these discussion groups where we get to share that wealth of knowledge with the members that we have. So if you found that, if, if that's interesting to you, feel free by all means to explore by yourself and I kept this link in the description below. And to our next video, I'll see you next class.